Hello everyone and welcome to another session at Adobe Data World 2024. We are pretty excited to be part of this one. I am Ashwini Lakshmanayanan, Solutions Consultant with Adobe Stecom Group and I have my colleague Subhi Maheshwari with me. So um, the agenda of this session would largely uh, be we will discuss what are the challenges that we often hear in the existing PDF engines, how we can overcome those challenges followed by a demo. And um, since this le uh, session which uh, would largely cover the advanced level topics of the AEM Guides native PDF engine, so at the end of this session, we will also share some resources that one can utilize to navigate from basics to advanced level. Uh, challenges that we often hear with uh, traditional methods of PDF generation are uh, the PDF engines are not cloud compatible or they are not scalable. Um, they often come with uh, high recurring costs. Though the data OT is free, uh, the customization for the for the customizations it would uh, require developer intervention and the experts uh, for the uh, experts with XSLT or XSL4 uh, expertise they are rare and uh, all of this would again be a time consuming and cost intensive process. So for the next thirty minutes, uh, we are here to talk and show you the art and science of uh, uh, PDF styling. To build your PDF style sheets like a pro. So we will explore how to leverage um, this game-changing data to PDF engine for your business, focusing on the advanced capabilities of the uh, cloud-based PDF publishing engine integrated into the Adobe Experience Manager guides. Style sheet driven publishing. So there are um, there are numerous pros and cons associated with style sheet driven publishing. It ensures uh, uh, uniform formatting across all the documents and it offers extensive customization options for uh, uh, for tailoring the PDF output to specific needs. However, uh, implementing those style sheet driven publishing also requires uh, familiarity with CSS or other style sheet languages as these changes need to be uh, incorporated either in the templates or uh, in the custom plugins. So all of this would often require developer intervention. Additionally, integrating those style sheets into the existing workflows or CMS can present uh, its own set of challenges basically. So how does uh, AEM Guides native PDF publishing engine differ from other traditional publishing mechanisms is that it is already integrated in the AEM Guides so you can build both the content of your PDF documents and also add your styling in the same tool. So um, to style the content that goes in your PDF document on a, on a high level, it's a two-step process basically. The first one is the page layout where you would determine the structural uh, elements of the document. For example, if I need to add a front cover, I want my PDF to have a front cover, back cover, a separate page for, to list out the figures, to list out my tables, and here and there some blank pages. And, uh, and also I have to define the sequence of how it gets laid out in my document. So all of these would go inside the page layout. And similarly, um, for the content, uh, I have to define how my content should look like, right? For example, uh, the font color or the styling and how my uh, cross references should look like, etc., can be defined in this content layout. So both um, uh, the tech stack used here is all open source. For the page layout, we use um, CSS uh, Paged Media, which is a W3 standard. And for the content layout, it's CSS3 standard. It's a it's a HTML editor, so we can use JavaScript as well. It's a Visivig editor, which means you don't um, you don't really have to be a pro developer to style your content. Basically, you can choose the options in the front end, and the styling code uh, gets automatically generated in the editor. We'll we'll see all of uh, these in the demo shortly. Um, and of course, if you're an expert user, you can also define the CSS directly in the source view to have more uh, grand control of the code. So um, speaking of the benefits of AEM Guides uh, native PDF engine, uh, it is more agile because, because we have modularized in a way that you can easily create and customize the templates 
with the Visiweek editor and publish the content as and when it is ready. So, um, so that way your content goes to the market or reaches the intended audience more quickly. It it, it supports the common languages like um, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. Whereas you need uh, specialized skills like XSL4, XSLT for data OT, and so is the performance comparatively when you are publishing uh, large sets of document. It has um, um, uh, built-in features, built-in security features that allows you to uh, password protect the document, enable the usage restrictions, and etc. You can apply. Um, uh, we have something called baselines uh, in uh, which is a guide zone capability. So you can apply those conditions to your content through this capability to streamline your PDF publishing, right? And uh, this engine also supports different color space conversions like. RGB, CMYK, and the conformance uh, standards, ensuring that all your documents are always, uh, you know, compliant. And it also uh, supports the data constructs and the schema. So, largely, these are all the benefits uh, of AEM guides, native PDF uh, engine. So, uh, so so far, whatever we have spoken is all the fundamental or the foundational information that we wanted to share before we start off with the um, advanced PDF customization techniques. Right. So um, today, largely, we will focus on these areas like working with content elements. Um, we can add cross references to tables, headings, paragraphs, and how it goes in the PDF. We can add a footnote, add styling to your footnote, um, uh, some template level settings. For example, um, if I have uh, metadata in my AEM assets or if I have my metadata in the data content, we can add those, we can combine those into my PDF output, we can see that. And um, uh, usage of variables in the cross references, we have um, um, newly added variables in the engine. So you can leverage those variables in your cross references nodes. You can customize your page size formatting for publishing to different sizes, um, rule-based manipulations like if you want to auto number the tables, figures, uh, if you want to customize the way the watermark has to be added to your document uh, based on the document state probably. So all that can be done. We'll show that and uh, troubleshooting. So end of the day, when you encounter any issues uh, with publishing, we'll show you how uh, troubleshooting with template HTML because when we generate, there is something called intermediate um, HTML that gets generated. So when you enable that in the settings, it gets downloaded. Uh, when you publish, um, when you publish, you can click on that uh, icon to download the intermediate HTML, and from that you can troubleshoot uh, to understand what what has gone wrong. Right, so that will show you and uh, different page display settings that's available um, uh, in the engine that we can show you. And we will also talk about uh, the recent developments in the, page, in the PDF engine, like page grouping options. As I said earlier, I can define how my um, uh, a page layouts should be laid out in the document in what sequence, in what order, um, or the merge. If I want to merge two uh, layouts, I can do that. So largely the page grouping options and we have redefined the CSS editor. We have done a lot of um, enhancements in the CSS, ed CSS editor. So we can show that. So um, it's more like a low, low code, no code customization. So we can explore that and a lot of preview. I mean, we have uh, uh, we have got uh, uh, better preview options. So it's all part of the redesigned uh, CSS editor. Third, uh, the advanced page output options. So we'll show you how we can add the conditionalized watermarking, uh, like uh, based on the document state. Uh, the watermark gets generated. So it, it's achievable through JavaScript. We'll show how it can be done and uh, adding stat static pages in the page layout. So that and support for language variables like generating PDF in multiple languages using the same uh, PDF template. So we can explore all of that. Um, and then we often say like uh, native PDF uh, uh, publishing is uh, cloud native PDF publishing, right? So why do we say that? So we have something uh, that it, that's introduced recently. It's part of the recent development. It's a new microservice-based uh, publishing architect architecture, which is available exclusively for cloud. So this is the architecture. So it is uh, using Adobe's cutting-edge uh, solutions like um, App Builder, IO Eventing, IMS to create server serverless offering. So 
all these are largely based or um, you know uh, it's developed and it's uh, ac- widely accepted based on the widely accepted industry standards like uh, kubernetes and docker so we all know that publishing generally is a resource intensive process depending on the system's uh, memory and cpu so the need for the resources increases when we publish large set of maps or execute uh, concurrent publishing so earlier um, earlier all the publishing happens on same kubernetes pod which is also which used to run on the same uh, aem cloud server so it had its own limitation on the memory and cpu usage which could breach fast so with this new uh, publishing microservices we have enabled a single container per request configuration so what it means is each publishing request will correspond to a container so that uh, uh, you know whether if the performance is much better than what we had earlier so these containers are generally discarded once publishing is over by and then the resources would be freed up so it is uh, secure it is of course secure because it is authenticated using oauth uh, authentication mechanism so some performance metrics is um, uh, I, i have put up here so with single publishing with microservices enabled on cloud it takes uh, 6 minutes and 20 second and for the on prem it's 4 minutes and uh, 14 seconds and for multi uh, for the multiple publishing it is very beneficial as you can see from the metrics it takes 7 minutes and whereas on on prem without microservices it takes 11 minutes so uh, it is highly recommended to enable uh, microservices for better performance and delivery so um, the the single uh, publishing uh, for the on prem is bit uh, uh, better you see uh, the highly elevated time for uh, uh, for the cloud it's it's largely because of the distributed nature of the cloud largely but uh, the multiple publishing is very beneficial so we highly recommend to enable these microservices for the better performance so we can see all of that in the uh, shortly in the demo uh, the, we will also share a documentation on how Uh, how we can set up this microservices on cloud so we can see that so yeah so let's move on to the demo so uh, i have logged into the aem guides user interface so this is the content that we are going to use for the session let me open this map so if you look at the content of this map lastly we will um, we would be covering all these concepts that we discussed a few minutes ago so starting with metadata language variable support and the other things that we discussed so we'll be covering all of it now in this demo so let's go to the output tab and open the native pdf output so metadata so if you want to propagate the metadata to the uh, pdf output file properties so we have three options right so first one is to use the metadata that is already added in the topic meta that is the metadata added in your data content second is um, adding an xmp file so this xmp file will already uh, will be provided i mean it will already have the metadata values so you can upload that xmp file in the system and uh, when you want to propagate the metadata from that file you'll have to browse through that particular file and then generate the output with this um, option enabled so when you do that all the values which are present in the xmp file would be propagated to the document properties of the pdf output right third option is providing the metadata names and values so when you do when you add all these um, metadata value uh, uh, values here so these values these dc creator dc writes so these are the expression that it will automatically map to the um, jcr property of the aem uh, in the aem system so it will pick the metadata value from the aem asset metadata and then propagate it to the document properties right so let's see an example so as i said the topic meta topic meta is the data content so i have added in my content uh, the author of this particular guide so if i go here and generate a Uh, pdf so the document properties will contain uh, the author name that i have already added in the content right so if i generate here while it gets generated i have a similar uh, pdf output that got generated so if i look at the document properties it would have this author name uh, which i have added in the data content 
Similarly, uh, if I have to add the metadata from XMP file, you, we can try that as well. Similarly, for uh, uh, for the metadata that we provide from the AEM's metadata, met, uh, asset metadata properties, if I generate, then the PDF output would look like this. It will carry all the values that I have um, uh, pushed from the AEM system. So it contains both these names. Right. So it has generated the PDF output. So um, this is to do with the metadata propagation from the um, to the document properties. So second uh, way of uh, propagating the metadata to the um, content to the data content, right? So if you have to leverage the metadata which is already there uh, in the system to the data content, what I'll do is I'll have to open the uh, template and add those metadata field values, define it there so that the system uh, generates the PDF output based on the values that we provide in the template. So let me go and open a template. So for this demo, I'd be using this high-tech uh, template. Uh, high-tech, which is a copy. Uh, basically, if you have to create a template, I'll go and click on this uh, PDF template. So basically, it comes with these three uh, factory templates. So we can create a new version or uh, using this as a blueprint, we can create a new template. So I have created this high-tech copy based on this out-of-the-box uh, template high-tech. So if I look at the page layout, uh, so as I said earlier, so this page layout defines the structural uh, elements of the document, right? So I should have a back cover, I should have a front cover for my PDF. So if I have these requirements, I'll have to add it one by one here. So high tech already comes with these um, uh, preloaded page layouts and for all the content level um, uh, you know, styling and the layout level styling, all those uh, details would CSS and uh, uh, the, the styling part would go inside this content and layout style sheets. So let's open a chapter first layout. So here I have added um, author field. So this field, how I have added this, this is a metadata field. So I'll have to click here add the fields and in the metadata I have added this author so when I click on the properties so it gets generated from the map so whatever uh, author value that I have added in my map would be uh, through this xpath expression it would get added it would get added here so similarly you can add uh, as many metadata properties that is available in your topic meta to the PDF template here and then when the system generates a PDF output the values get mapped and then the PDF output will have the final uh, uh, final content with the metadata values. In case uh, this is uh, one way to propagate the metadata which is there in the data uh, content, right? Similarly, if I have to uh, propagate the metadata which is there in the AEM uh, assets metadata, then we have, uh, we'll have to go to metadata, click on plus, and then from um, from the drop down, you'll have to select asset. So when you select asset, then you'll have to give the property value, the DC creator, which is uh, associated to the author value. So when you do this, then the author value gets picked from this particular property, DC creator. So you can also add those um, AEM asset properties inside the uh, PDF template, and then you can generate the PDF output. So this is these are the couple of ways where we can generate the PDF output with the metadata. One through the document to the document properties, and other directly to the uh, uh, to the PDF document content. So if you have noticed, I have added uh, a value called author here. So this is the language variable so if i have to create um, different versions or different versions of a pdf that is in different languages but based on one pdf template then we can leverage this um, language variable support so in guides we have this uh, language variable support for that we'll have to go inside this um, 
language variables option and click on edit so by default uh, it comes with it, it gets loaded with a lot of uh, uh, predefined languages but to enable the values enable the uh, translation languages we'll have to go to the settings and then enable whichever language is applicable for now i have enabled um, english german and then french so i have enabled these three values for this uh, session so if you look at the english so all these are the variables so there are basically two sets of variables one is the application variable and uh, second is the user defined variable for example application variables are um, uh, you can have this chapter uh, chapter number um, copyright label so all these are um, application variables right and for example figure title so I, it comes it already give, comes with a set of uh, preloaded uh, variables and if you want to add any more variables we can click on plus and add them and for the user defined variables for example additional information uh, component label so there are few uh, content level um, or the uh, application uh, the uh, the content level variables that you want to add based on your requirement right so those are all user defined variables so for that you'll have to add here and the equivalent value for example if i add it in english um, you'll have to add the same variable the equivalent um, the translated uh, value of that variable has to be added here so once this is added for all the languages then if you go to the template as i said i'm using this high tech template right so i'll go to the chapter first and then i have just added uh, dragged and dropped the author label here so if i've dragged and dropped this author label now if i generate a pdf uh, with different languages then the system recognizes this label language variable and then it translates it to the appropriate value that we have already predefined in the language variables uh, in, the, in the language variable section so let's generate a pdf uh, with a different language while it gets generated i have already the pdf which is generated for a language which is set to german right so if you look at the um, note it is translated to the equivalent uh, value in uh, german so uh, all these values would be picked by the system and gets uh, uh, gets into the pdf output now let's see the french equivalent of the of the values that we have defined here right so um, this way you can um, you know you can use these language variables to have the localized version of your um, of your content basically so there's one more um, feature called variables so here what we would do is for example um, this particular guide that i'm authoring can have several releases right uh, in every specific guide there would be a set of content which would be common and only few set of uh, values or the piece of content might vary with every release right so in such cases we can define variables for example um, i have taken this user guide i have taken a sample called uh, advanced pdf styling guide and this styling guide uh, will come in two variants let's take an example it comes in two uh, different release cycles one is uh, december release and another one is feb release so i have to update the content with the date uh, the release date uh, its version the guides uh, document version and the product so it's just an example where i have added these three these three variables so these are the only variables that may change in my uh, uh, in my document so i can define those values here for example yeah. for the december release the product value is uh, expense manager guides and in release date i have added a date and version similarly i can add a, as many uh, variables i want um and map it to a particular uh, variable set so this way 
first i'll have to go to settings and then create a variable set here for example i can add a new release now so for this now we can change these values right so i can change this value and then uh, let's update it now i have changed the variables now i have three variable sets so now if i go back to my uh, pdf output reset i have an option um, to choose the variable set i want to for example if i use this december release cycle then the variables and the associated values applicable for this december release would get appended in my pdf document right for example the previous version of the pdf that got generated had this um, december release and when it got um, uh, released the version details all of that has been added with this variable set right now let's um, publish with april release cycle variable set so this should contain the values of the variable corresponding to the A april release okay the pdf is generated so let's look at it so the date has been changed so all the variable set variables um which is defined for the april release has been updated so this is just in sample where i have added these variables so this can be added based on uh, the user requirements basically okay so now let's see uh, the uh, how we can work with the cross references right so for cross references uh, we we keep adding different um, uh, links and other data inside the topic values right so cross references so for example if i add a xref here and then if i leave it without giving any text for example i add a so here i would have to give any content reference right so now i would give this now if you have noticed i haven't given any text value there so if i don't give any text value by default it will pick the title of the title of that particular file in case if i have already given a, a, a description or the text value when i have chosen a particular content reference then the description gets loaded for that particular uh, a particular extra value so the order of this precedence i mean the the cross references first one it will pick from the link text that is added in the cross reference second it would go for the cross reference format that is defined in the native uh, pdf template and third one would be with the default cross reference format so based on this precedence the value gets added in the cross references basically if you look at the pdf generated pdf um probably we can look at the cross references section so this is how the on uh, the cross references um value gets generated so if i have added a language variable support topic inside my um as a xref in this particular document then it would show see um, the particular value of that particular uh, topic title value of the particular topic on which so which over page it has been added similarly if i have to reference a particular table i have reference a table here data world so the value of this particular table or the description or the title of this particular table has been added in the has been added in this format this uh, this uh, this word uh, whatever we define it here these are all highly customizable you can define it here in the template settings basically i have taken this high tech copy as an example so if i go to the settings and cross references these words and these uh, it can be added based on our requirement and these are the variables which is already defined in the system so you can leverage these and you use it in the pdf basically so these are some of the items uh, that i wanted to show so there are few other items that um, um 
we wanted to discuss probably i'll let surbi to discuss all of it now uh, over to you surbi thanks ashwini hello everyone i am surbi and i will be showcasing rest of the features today so we will i have listed them down here and we will go through them one by one first one is auto numbering tables and figures so in the content Uh, we probably everybody has few figures and tables so if you want to auto number those in the uh, native pdf output how can you do that so uh you just have to go to the template these are the pdf templates and uh, i will be using data world prime for demo purposes and in the css it has uh, two css in one of the css i will add the styling for this auto number so caption is used for table in caption i have already added it as auto number with decimal style and for waiting is one dot and uh, starting the numbering from one and it uh, it is very easy to create it i'll show you uh, so fig caption is the other one which we want to add for figure caption figure titles if we want to auto number them and now i can enable the auto numbering choose the select uh, select the styles from this drop down there are many listed styles i'm choosing decimal in format i am putting one period and space and then starting the numbering from one so let me save it now we can go to the preset where we have to select the uh, template uh, where i made the changes which is data world prime and we can just generate the output also in the template settings i can show that i have added a list of figures and list of tables these pages so we should be able to see those in the output so this is our table of contents and after that list of figures is coming in that you can see all the figures are auto numbered from 1 2 3 4 5 5 and similarly for tables they are also auto numbered if we want to see we can just go to the figure and in the content also you will see that auto numbering is coming and same is the case for tables here uh, for tables also 1 2 so auto numbering will continue throughout the document unless we want to restart so this is uh, how easily you can achieve the auto numbering for tables and figures now uh, i will move to the next part which is the footnote so in footnote there are three parts one is the footnote text another is the footnote call and footnote marker and what are these we will just see so in this document you can see i have inserted this one footnote this legal work can require going to court this is the footnote text and what will be inserted here in the content is the footnote call and what you see uh, is added uh, below in the uh, end of the topic is footnote marker which is this one because the styling is uh, selected as uh, decimal you are seeing it in numbers now how to uh, design all these three parts how to style them so for footnote i have uh, applied one output class fn class and uh, rest of the thing we need to make the changes in css let me search for fn now uh, for this the sudo classes footnote call and markers are added and uh, we, i have made the font color to be red for call and for marker it is green and for fn class we can see that the font color is gray so uh, these all these three things should be coming in the output now let's move back and see here so i inserted the footnote here this one is coming as red color call and in the end we are seeing this one in green color which is marker and this is the footnote text coming in gray so it is very easy to style your footnotes and uh, like we saw the auto numbering of tables and figures as well so moving on we will now uh, to see the next part next item is watermark and conditional watermark so watermark uh, cap capability was already there uh, in the native pdf from the beginning here in the advanced tab if you see uh, there is a option to show watermark this is a static field when you enable it and give some value in the watermark field you will be uh, seeing the watermark added in the generated pdf but now if you want to add it based on a condition So, for example, the example I have uh, used in the uh, used for the demo is that if your document state of data map is not approved, then add draft as watermark. So, how to achieve that? That requires a JavaScript solution, and in the template, in your PDF template, you can add that JavaScript. So, I have added this example. Uh, 
where I am adding the watermark draft if my document state is not approved. Now uh, let's go to the uh, document state. It is edit and uh, it, you can uh, change it. So whatever uh, if whatever document state it is, if it is not approved, uh, this should add a watermark to your uh, PDF. So you can see that draft is coming. Now uh, where to refer this watermark JS? In my page layout first variant, I have added this uh, in the content region. And one more setting I had to do was enable my JavaScript in the uh, presets advanced tab. You have to enable JavaScript so that it can do its work. And if uh, after these things, you should be able to conditionalize the watermark. Now let's say it is coming draft because we saw that the status was not approved. But uh, let's say if I say it, uh, status is not edit, I can just uh, change my uh, JS and say that the status, if it is not edit, then only add. Now if I generate the PDF again, uh, this uh, draft watermark should be removed. It should not be added. So now you can see a watermark is not there. So this is how you can conditionalize the watermark based on your need uh, with a JavaScript solution. Next, moving on is add static pages using page layout. So here, what is the use case? Use case is, let's say here, I can say that after my table of contents, list of figures and list of tables, or after these three pages, my chapter is starting, right? So what I want is that between these two, uh, some, uh, let's say one empty page should come or one page with a image should come, which is static content, but it should come after table of list of tables and but before our uh, chapters. So what I can do for this is I have to go to my template settings. So here you are seeing, uh, let me just make it none. I will explain these options as well. And uh, what we will do is we will create one new page layout. We will call it static page. Now let's say I just uh, want to add one image here. And I say that do not repeat it. And then position is our uh, center center. So you are seeing this alert icon in the center, right? Now what I have to do is in the settings, when I go here to add, you will see that this entry has started coming in the add page layout. I can add it and now I can move it across. So I wanted that this static page should come after list of tables and between chapters and topics. So I can create a new page layout, add it to the uh, this page layout order and then move it across wherever I want. So if I save it now and generate the PDF again, what I'm expecting is that after list of tables, static page will come with that alert small icon and then chapter will come. So uh, let's uh, see that. So this is our table of contents, list of figures, list of tables. And now that static page has started coming with uh, this image. And now after that chapter starts. So this is a very useful feature if you just want to reorganize your content sections of your content and uh, add some pages in between. So th that is the purpose and use case for this feature. Now uh, let's move on to the next. So next is uh, re regarding uh, re related to this earlier one only that how to order and merge your pages. So let's go back and see. So we were able to see that how I placed the static page between list of tables and chapters and topics. So you can rearrange anything here, right? So I'm removing the static page as of now. Now let's understand what this merge with setting is. So what it means is as of now, if you see uh, after list of tables, there is a lot of empty space. Now, if I want my topic to start, chapter to start from this page itself, what I can do is I can merge this list of uh, tables with my next page. Next page is chapters and topics. So chapters will start from that page itself. So there are three options, previous page, next page, and none. 
So by default for everything it is none and now I am choosing next page for uh, and uh, let us generate the PDF. I will uh, keep the uh, template settings open so that you have the idea that after list of tables on that same page chapter should start. List of tables and chapter started uh, running from here earlier it was uh, starting from next page. So that is how you can utilize this merge with feature. Now uh, we will move back to uh, the list which is next is redesign CSS editor, no code, no code. So the concept here is that you should not be a CSS expert to be able to use uh, this editor. Here in the left panel we are showing all the styles and in the center you will see that what all style is applied. So font size is 24, let's say, for heading to it is 20 point. And on the right side, you can see as I'm moving, preview is changing. So it is uh, showing the runtime preview. So if I change the font color here to green, automatically it will start showing you green. So you have a better view that what you are changing and how it will look, it will show you the preview. Also, this is new that we have added the properties and values here. So if you know any property name, you don't know, uh, you don't need to search here. You can just directly add it, uh, the, add the name and value. So this is a very user friendly, intuitive way to uh, style your CSS without being a code expert for CSS. So that is the concept of low code, no code uh, CSS editor. Next, uh, last but not the least, the part is that how to troubleshoot. So when you style so many things, there is a chance that what you thought may be some uh, style, particular style on note or any other element should come, but in the output, you are not seeing that. So what do you do now? So one good way to troubleshoot here is that in the native PDF, in the advanced tab, you will find one option, download temporary files. So if you enable this and generate, this button comes up, download temporary files. So what happens is that when you download this folder, you will find few CSS files and one merged HTML file. So this is the merged HTML file which I am opening in the browser now. So here uh, you will see a lot of styles being applied right here. Few things happen after this, but like you can see that auto numbering is already coming here. What you can do is you can inspect and see the DOM and for everything you can see that what class is applied for every element in the DOM what is the class and what is the CSS that you can see on the right. Okay, so if you want to just see that, okay, why this uh, one figure, this caption is coming. So you know that the auto numbering is coming from this big caption, which we added. Now it is visible on the right side uh, in the console. So this is how you can debug that what I applied versus what I'm getting. If there is a difference, what is happening in the merge HTML? Because this is uh, something which is the base for creating PDF. So first we, from data topics, we generate the HTML, apply all the styling, and then we do the uh, conversion to PDF. So if here, uh, it, coming here will give you some idea if something is not going right. And uh, next thing is that you, uh, as I applied the watermark JS, right? So that script is also coming. So you can open your JavaScript in the sources here, and then you can put a debug or breakpoint and see the values as well. For example, that uh, I can check that document state is coming as edit and not upload. So that kind of debugging you can do. So it will help you greatly in uh, finding any issues you have uh, while working on native PD publishing. Yeah, so demo we have C. Now these are few useful links. One is uh, setup steps, another functional overview, documented common examples and microservices for cloud. So these are few things which will help you start with the process. So if you are a beginner, please go through these links and they will help you to get started. Now, what are the uh, summary and key takeaways from today's session? So first one is that it is based, we are generating the PDFs on cloud. So it ensures the speed and scalability. As Ashwini also told, right, the cloud architecture, how it is better than on-prem uh, server. So that is the first part. Next is that you have out of the box uh, PDF engine. So there is no additional license required. It is covered in the cost with the AM guides license. Next uh, part is standard based. So it is uh, no, there's no, I mean, uh, 
proprietary standard here. Everything is open source, CSS3, HTML5, JavaScript. So if you work with this, it will be easier to go ahead. And the last but not the least is our CSS editor, which I show that very low code or no code kind of architecture is there and you can easily style your content. So it, it really uh, is a very powerful way of publishing stylish PDF. Thank you from Ashwini and my side. Thank you.